Let me read to you a passage from the fifth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 13 to 16. It's the Gospel for Tuesday of the tenth week of ordinary time. St. Matthew writes, Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything, except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. That's from Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. We are led to think of the uniqueness of Christ. What do I mean? Well, in about 343 BC, Aristotle was invited by Philip II of Macedon to become teacher of his son Alexander. And with that, he was appointed head of the Royal Academy of Macedon. During his period as head of the academy, Aristotle taught Alexander and at least two other future kings, Ptolemy and Cassander. He encouraged Alexander in his ambitions to overcome Persia, advising him to look after the Greeks as after friends and relatives, and to deal with the barbarians as with beasts or plants. Actually, Aristotle knew a lot about beasts and plants. Indeed, he studied almost every possible subject at the time and made great contributions to most of them. Anatomy, astronomy, geography, geology, physics and zoology. He is especially famous for his philosophical prowess, writing on ethics, aesthetics, metaphysics, politics, rhetoric, natural theology, to name but some of his philosophical interests. He had an encyclopedic knowledge and extraordinary intellectual penetration. Near the end of Alexander's life, Alexander was perhaps getting a little paranoid and began to suspect plots against himself. He had executed Aristotle's grand nephew, Callisthenes, as a traitor, and Aristotle himself had manifest contempt for Alexander's pretensions to divinity. The young empire builder threatened his old teacher in letters. Now, sordid politics aside, all up Aristotle made for himself an immemorial reputation for his doctrine, especially in certain fundamental areas of philosophy. His thought has had an immense influence, but he never presumed to think that the one possessing his corpus of thought would have the key to the life and safety of the world. He never suggested to his students, such as the teenage Alexander, that precisely because he had been taught by Aristotle, he would be the light for the peoples he conquered, though he certainly encouraged Alexander to go forth and conquer. One suspects indeed that the impression picked up by the privileged likes of Alexander was that Aristotle's teaching was best confined to them, the privileged few. It helped their status. When the grand old philosopher began to publish his works, Alexander complained to him, you have not done well, he wrote, to publish your doctrines. For in what shall I surpass other men if those doctrines wherein, wherein I have been trained are to be all men's common property? In this example, we are reminded of one of the distinctive features of Jesus Christ and his teaching, his colossal and unashamed claims. I remember travelling years ago with a party of German Catholics and one of their priests referred to the then Cardinal Archbishop of Munich. He was in his early 60s, he said, and therefore in the prime of life, at the height of his powers and maturity. Jesus Christ, if we may say so without disrespect, was barely out of his 20s, a young man by modern standards, and making the most astonishing claims of all. No one in their right mind, we would normally say, would make such claims as he made. Yes, indeed, Jesus Christ, in view of his unique claims, 
would have to have been either a knave or a fool were those claims untrue, but all know that he was neither. Aristotle would never have said that he was the light of the world, but Jesus Christ calmly said this and much more. He was the world's only light, and he, that light, was the life of man. I am the resurrection and the life, he said. The man who believes in me will have life and will live forever. John chapter 11, verse 26. And I am giving signs of the truth of this. John chapter 11, verse 40. Aristotle never claimed that the one who accepted his teaching would be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Alexander came to think that he was the salt of the earth as he conceived this to be, and his old teacher laughed at him behind his back. But Jesus Christ said to his disciples, to those who accepted his teaching and him as their teacher, that you are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. His disciples were the salt of the whole earth and the light of the whole world. And that is why, before the risen Christ ascended into heaven, he commissioned his disciples to go to the whole world. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. On the mountain during the transfiguration, the Father had said, Listen to him. Luke chapter 9, verse 35. All are to listen to him. All. From the outset of his public ministry, Jesus Christ presented himself as the one name that mattered. We read how during his conversation with the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well, he told her quite simply and directly that he was the Messiah. John chapter 4, verse 25 to 26. I assume that he did the same thing with his first disciples. We read that on the threshold of Christ's public ministry, soon after his baptism by John, John's two disciples followed Jesus and stayed with him that day. The next day, one of them, Andrew, told his brother Simon that we have found the Messiah. John chapter 1, verse 35 to 42. Jesus would have told them that he was the Messiah. There was much more to come. Ah, yes, Jesus Christ, the jewel of our race, the incomparable one, the saviour of all. <laughs>